Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents, here to share from Matthew chapter 8, verse 1 through 3. Now, this is for those of you who feel as if you are so far gone, even God can't help you. When he was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him, and behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Now, in the Old Testament, according to the Levitical law, it was unlawful to touch a leper. The lepers had to go without the camp so that they wouldn't spread the disease. And if they didn't get healed, they would have to die in isolation. But if they got healed, they would go through the cleansing and then come back into society. Well, listen to this. This is what I love about God personified through Jesus Christ. You know, those things that we don't want to touch because they're icky, they're nasty, we don't want to be bothered. We don't like nasty, dirty things because they make us either want to puke or they take our breath away because they stink so bad or they're so um, creepy. Ooh, they give us the heebie-jeebies, right? Well, do you know we were Shaping and born, born and shaping in iniquity. I mean, it just comes natural to us to tell a lie, sneak, do something we were told not to do. You know, all of that. But God is holy. Jesus lived a holy life. No sin. And considering that, he was always willing to touch uncleanness in a person's life. The reason I say that is because when you look at yourself, you see yourself as, I'm a, I'm a hopeless case. Nobody can help me. Look how crazy I am. Look how emotionally topsy-turvy that I mean, I am really jacked up. And Psychiatrists can't do anything. Medicine can't do anything. I might as well just curl up and die. I'm a waste of time. Hmm. So you see yourself as hopeless. You see yourself as so messed up that there is no help. There is no, no remedy. You are just an oops of society. Well, that's not the way God sees you. I want to tell a story before I go into this. Years ago, a friend of mine, she uh, had a family of, let me see, one, two, three, I think about six people that lived in the family. Six adults, one bathroom. Mm, mm, mm three-bedroom house yeah and you know how we all go through those situations where we have a toilet issue it gets stopped up from time to time hmm yeah that's another message getting stopped up well after it gets stopped up it starts to stink now doesn't it because an accumulation builds and you have to get the bucket and fill it and throw it and then you got to plunge and hope to get some of it down. <laughs> you know how nasty that gets. Well, no money for the plumber because hubby, who was a construction worker, was laid off during that period. That was a slow period. So he's running around trying to hustle up work, just trying to keep something coming in. But not enough to pay a plumber. Guess who knocks on their door after church? Their pastor. Now, you, you know how a lot of us think of men and women of the cloth. 
Well, this man had his Sunday best on, his suit, shirt, and tie. Yeah. And he came over to see how she was doing. And he told her, You know, sister so-and-so, uh, the Lord told me to come check up on you. How you doing? Is everything all right? Now, she was just at church. So it was obvious things had to be going pretty well, right? She did not want to let that man in her house. They did everything they could to freshen it up, but you know how embarrassing that is. And he said, well, let's see. What seems to be your problem, sister? And she was like, well, all, 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 all. He marched. He melted. She didn't have to tell him. He marched straight to the bathroom. Took off his vest or his uh, blazer. Rolled up his Sunday go to meeting shirt sleeves. Put his bare hand. Listen, I'm making a point. So listen to this. Bare hand down into the collected family jewels. And we're not just talking about TT. Yeah. Down into the family jewels. Yuck, yuck. And again, I say yuck. All the way down as far as his arm could go till he found the blockage. Bam! He loosens it up, unplugs it, and away goes troubles down the drain. Now, you know he had to do a lot of scrubbing when he got through, but he put his hand down in that mess. Something most of us would not do. That's why we call the plumbers. And it's our mess now, isn't it? Nasty, nasty. Well, when she told me that story, the revelation hit me. God's love is way more powerful than any man, than any man of the cloths. I mean, God's love is powerful. And I want to tell you, who, those of you who feel hopeless, God will take this will take his holy, sanctified hand and rev it right down into the midst of your uh, family spoils, into your secrets, into your 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 buried shame. He will dig his holy hand into the cesspool of your horrors, and he will unplug what paralyzes you but you have to ask him in there his love goes that deep his work is that powerful and thorough I know he did it for me umpteen times things that most people would be embarrassed to think about now what I say to you is you are not hopeless. You do not serve a wimp of a God. Or if you don't serve him, your God is not wimpy. He is not skittish. Ew. Mm -mm. He's not holier than thou. Oh, he's holy. But he doesn't carry that holier than thou attitude. Now you watch it in Jesus in Jesus' actions, when he laid his hand and touched that leper, according to the Levitical law, you were not to touch a leper because that would render you unclean. Jesus touched. It made a point of saying that. It didn't say Jesus healed the leper. It said he touched the leper, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. There is nothing wrong with you that God cannot heal. Listen to me when I say that. There is nothing wrong with you that God cannot rectify. There is nothing wrong with you that God cannot remove. There is nothing, no damage done to you that God cannot undo. 
I am here as a witness to the power of God's ever-reaching love. I would not be sitting here today if it weren't for God's love. Do you hear me? I used to break out in outbursts of rage and, and I would have all of these volatile emotional outbursts that would make people think, oh, she got a cuckoo. Nowadays, they call it bipolar. When I asked God what was wrong with me, he said one word, rage. And I hurried up and responded, Lord, get it out, please. And after I said that prayer, I can honestly say I almost went off twice a little bit compared to the way I was doing it all the time before. But for 35, 36 years of salvation, two ain't bad. When you look at the other 27 years without God, and it's like... Tch. You know, it was like uh, popcorn. You never knew when I was going to go off. Or why. So, don't feel like you're hopeless. Not only will God touch you, He is available for you to touch Him. Some of you, the, the Bible says, Jesus asked the disciples, he said, if you have two people and one owes a lot, I'm really paraphrasing, okay? Loose paraphrase. <laughs> if one owes a person a lot and that person forgives them for uh, the debt and the other person owes the person just a little bit, and that person forgives them the debt. Which one of those people will love the most? Love the most. And one of the disciples said, well, the one that was forgiven the most. And Jesus said, well said. He who has been forgiven little, I'm paraphrasing now, loves little. And Jesus emphasized, he who has been forgiven much loves much when God gets through with you you're so grateful you're beside yourself you've been so deeply touched that you can't help but start feeling love and compassion for other people in ways that you never could before let God touch you where the cesspool is let God touch you where your shame and embarrassment is. Let God touch your nastiness, your hoarding, your masturbation, your anger, your abuse, your rape, whether you're a victim or perp. Let God touch that. Call him. Call on him. Ask him to get in there. There's an old song. The potter wants to put you back together again. And he does. And he will. He can. And he will. All I say is put him to the test. Get him in there. Get him down in that secret basement. Mm-hmm nobody else knows about and watch what happens to you